So what I want to do is I want to answer seven of your top questions about heaven. So if you're taking notes, here's what we see. The first number one question or the number seven question that we get uh, about heaven is this. Um, what happens to, taking notes, babies after they die? Okay, this is a very important question, and it's one that I was asked a lot of times, and it's one that me and Ashley actually wrestled with early on in our marriage. Because before Esther and Ruth uh, were born, we actually had a miscarriage beforehand. And it was really devastating for us as our family. We have two beautiful daughters now, but even when we're just hanging out at the house, watching TV, it still feels like there's a piece of our family that is missing. Like there's, there's a piece of our family that just isn't there. And so we really wrestled over this question. When we die, are we gonna get to see our unborn child in heaven? Are they gonna be in heaven? in heaven. And a lot of families in our church are also wrestling with that same question. So there's some families in our church that have had stillborns. There's some families in our church that through a tragic accident or through early childhood disease, they actually lost a child early in age. We have other families who are watching online who have children with intellectual disabilities that can't fathom or comprehend the things of the Lord. And so there's a big question that many people wonder, whenever my child dies, does that mean that they're going to go to heaven or something else? It's a very significant question. And it normally gets answered in two different ways. So one way people answer it is by the age of accountability. How many of you ever heard of that? The age of accountability, right? That's nowhere found in the Bible. Okay, there is no doctrine or teaching that covers what is known as the age of accountability. Basically, they would say like, well, once you go into first grade, you're held accountable for your sins as if, you know, morality just wakes up overnight as soon as they learn to do multiplication. But that's actually not found in the Bible anywhere. And then others would come to it and they say, well, that means you have to baptize your babies. People who grow up in a Catholic tradition or a more high church tradition, they would teach that infant baptism washes away original sin. And so if you want your, make sure your child goes to heaven, then you have to get them baptized when they're infants. Again, that's not found anywhere in the scriptures as well. There's no reference to infant baptism in the Bible. That's actually tradition made up by man because baptism is a outward sign of an inward change and a public declaration of faith. And because infants can't do that, their baptisms are illegitimate. That's not what gets them into heaven. Both of those are really just man-made tradition and superstition. But I actually believe that yes, in fact, children do go to heaven when they die. You say, well, how do you get that? And why do you believe that? I believe that because of the nature and character of God as a father. Amen. That God reveals himself as a father. That God loves us with the love and the affection that a father has towards his children. And so according to the nature and the character of God that we see throughout all of scripture, God is a father who has a heart for children. In fact, Jesus actually models this for us in Matthew 19, 14, where when Jesus is talking to the disciples, here's what he actually says about heaven. He says, let the children come to me for such is the kingdom of heaven. And so if Jesus teaches it and Jesus says, I only say what the father tells me to say, then it would make sense that God, the father would actually say the same thing. But another great example we see through the Old Testament is the life of David. David was a great king over Israel. And through an adulterous affair, he actually had a child with a woman named Bathsheba. And during childbirth, they actually lost their son. Their son died and David is in grief. He is crying out to the Lord. He is praying. And here's what David says in 2 Samuel uh, 12, 23. He says, I will go to him, but he will not return to me. But now he is dead. What point does grief have? I'm going to go to him because he will not return to me. So David makes a promise to himself that he's going to live his life and glorify and honor God because when he dies, he wants to be reunited with his child. And this is a great hope for many of us as parents who have had maybe had a miscarriage. One in four women actually have miscarriages. It's very common. It's just not talked about. But I want you to know that when you get to heaven, you will be reunited with that child. I don't know if it was a boy or girl for me and Ashley, with my luck, it was probably another girl. <laughs> but I know that when I get to heaven, we'll know. And that, that part of our family be reunited. And I can just see Esther and Ruth playing with her or him and me and Ashley watching and listening and talking together. It brings great hope for us as parents. For those of you who had miscarriage, I want you to know there is hope. For those of you who have lost a child, there is hope. 
For those of you who have a child with uh, intellectual disabilities, I want you to know that God loves that child more than you do. And for those even great hope for women who've had abortions, that God would remove the guilt and the shame and the moment you get to heaven, you will be reunited with that child. What a beautiful picture of what heaven is gonna be like. 